Hello guys, in this video we're gonna take a look at working with the await keyword and async function. We're also gonna take a look at working a little bit with promises, just in order to be able to use the await keyword together with an async function in a proper way. And for this example I'm using Node. Uh, I'm actually using Node as a build engine inside Sublime Text. So you can see if I were about to do it like this, console.log, hello, and run it. I would just get the output here, but you can just run node as usual if you want to. So let's go ahead and remove that. So the first we're going to do is we're going to just create a simple function. Let's name it first. We can leave it empty for now. Nothing more than that. I'm going to create a main function. Let's call it just function main. And leave it empty for now. And then we're just going to fire it up by running it running it down at the bottom so yes you can see my workflow here uh, let's say console log hello and i'm running that and i'm just getting the output here in the console so let's go ahead and close that remove this so now what we're going to do as i said we're going to take a look at uh, using the sync uh, a sync function uh, with a wait keyword. Now, the wait expression causes an async function execution to pause until a promise is fulfilled that is resolved or rejected. So basically what that means is we're gonna make this main function stop execution of this entire program uh, or this entire app until the first function here has resolved. And don't worry, you're gonna get this in just a minute, how it works. So what we're gonna do is, uh, first we're gonna say here, uh, no sorry by the way, first we're gonna declare this main function as an async function, because if we don't, this await keyword will not work, all right? The await keyword only works inside an async function. So let's call this async function main. And then the function we want to await. In this case, we're gonna await the first function, which we're gonna work a little bit more with in just a second. So basically, this is just gonna wait for the first uh, function until anything else happens. So let's just say, below here, let's say, console.log uh, first function ran, all right? And then let's go up inside the first function. And in here, we're gonna just return a new promise. Now this tutorial doesn't really cover promises, but uh, um, it's really not that hard. Basically, this, uh, this means that it, this function will either resolve, which is the function completed successfully, or it's gonna reject, which means it did not complete successfully. In this case, let's just say resolve. Now the resolve uh, takes an argument or a parameter uh, where you can pass data down here, right? To the weight. So let's just say resolve um, data to pass, like that. So now what we expect to see here, of course, is, uh, oh, by the way, sorry, we can also do like this, await first, then result. So this is the result from the result right here. And let's just use an error function for simplicity in this case. With that, and then just, uh, let's say, console.log um, result. So this should be console.log. Now, of course, what we expect to see is uh, data to pass is console.log first, then the first function ran is logged. So let's go ahead and run this. So as you can see, exactly as we expected, data to pass and first function ran. All right, so nothing strange going on there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this entire inside a 
try and catch block. So let's just say try right there. Then we're gonna say catch. And let's just pass in the error here so we can get the error and say console block error. I'm not gonna I'm gonna explain this in just a second. So now what's going on here is we're trying to get this uh, first function or we're trying to call the first function if it succeeds we're gonna console.log what has been resolved all right so this is success if this function would be rejected we would catch an error down here all right and then we just console.log error so now of course what we would uh, what we will see is uh, data to pass is gonna be logged. So let's just run that and as you can see data to pass is resolved now. Let's say that we're gonna reject instead and uh, Basically instead of console.logging error, let's just do it like this and yes the console.log error like a string and run and as you can see since we're rejecting we're catching the error and console.logging the error. So this is basically a really simple way to work with uh, error handling with uh, async functions, the await keyword, try and catch. Now, another thing that's worth, worth uh, mentioning about the await keyword is uh, like I said this function will stop its execution until this function has ran, ran all right so that means basically we could change this to resolve let's do it like this and uh, add a set timeout here like that uh, set timeout to one second a thousand milliseconds oops Sorry guys, my m microphone is uh, in the center of the screen, so I can see what I'm typing. So yeah, so now we would expect this to uh, console.log data to pass what we're passing in the resolve after one second, right? So let's wait one second, and as you can see, we're getting it uh, console.log as we should. Now what would happen if we would for example say down here second and we would run a second function so let's say function second and inside the cons uh, sorry the second function let's just say console.log second function ran so let's see what we got now if we're gonna run this as you can see here, the second function is actually waiting for the first function to finish since we're using the await keyword inside an async function with a promise. So nothing will actually happen here until this first function has completed, all right? Now just to show you a really simple example of how it would look if we, we didn't use the await keyword here. Uh, we could say like this first so this will run the first function then the second function all right then let's remove the promise here and keep the set time out and uh, let's just change that to console.log and this will run after one second and then this should run let's see what we got now as you can see now the second function actually runs before the first function and that's exactly why you use the wait keyword plus it's great with error handling as i showed you here so now stepping back to where we just were if i run this again and show you as you can see the first function runs always before the second function thanks to the sync function with the wait keyword and the promise that is returned 
And another thing about this uh, async function is that it works uh, great inside classes as well. So let's set basically yes, let's remove this. And create a new JavaScript class, let's say my class. Uh, and just create a, you can create a main function. And let's also create a, a sync function. I just declare the sync function exactly as we just did, but without the fu function declaration, of course, since we're in a class and this is then called a method. So we're gonna say a sync, uh, let's call it first again. Uh, let's return a new promise once again. Resolve, reject. Oops. Like that. Uh, oh, sorry. I forgot the function declaration here. So, we guess gonna resolve this. Let's just resolve it to true. Um, and now, of course, we're not gonna use the sync function here. This, this, that was just to show you uh, how to type it. We're gonna use it in the main function. So yes, the sync main, and that's the same thing as we just did, but now we're using a class instead. So let's just say here, uh, without the try catch, uh, we can just use the wait keyword like this. So let's say I wait first. Uh, and then let's console the log of uh, the result of this uh, result. Um, so now instead of passing uh, um, the data inside the resolve from the first function as we did previously when we did like this result arrow function and so on, we're just gonna I'm gonna show you another way to do this. That's just to uh, declare a variable. So let's say let result or let's say we can use a variable. Variable result equals with uh, await uh, first function, then console.log result. This should console.log nothing because we're not returning nothing. Just a bool. Oh, sorry. Uh, it should re re console.log true, of course. Sorry, I did not initialize the class so let's just say a new my class uh, dot main let's see what we got oh sorry of course now uh, since we're in a class we can't just say await first we have to say await this dot first, and then it works. So right here, I'm just initializing the new class, calling the main function. Then we're awaiting the first function, and we have to use this because it's in this class, all right? And then we just console dot logging the result. Now this is nothing special. This was just to show the, you that you can actually use uh, sync functions inside a class as well. So yeah, that's basically how you use uh, uh, the basics of a sync function, await keyword, um, try and catch, as well as a very simple example of using a promise together with a sync function. So I hope you learned something from this tutorial. Bye bye.